Embattled chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, has been re-elected as the party's national chairman for his second term in office. Abure was re-elected by a unanimous affirmation of delegates at the party's national convention in Newi Anambra State. Uh, chairman of the national convention and deputy governor of Abia State, Ike Chuku Emetu, declared him the winner during the event attended by some party leaders and members. Also at the convention, delegates recommended that the 2027 presidential ticket be solely reserved for its former presidential candidate, Peter Obi, even though he was absent at the convention. The 387 delegates also elected members of the party's working committee, while slots for representatives of both the NLC and the Trade Union Congress were left vacant. By everyone here present, as delegates in this very national convention by the powers bestowed upon me as the chairman of this very convention, I hereby declare Barrister Julius Abure. <laughs> gratitude to all the delegates to this national convention for the trust and the confidence Reposing us to continue as members of the National Committee. I assure you that we continue to give positive leadership, proactive leadership, we we'll continue to give result oriented leadership to this party. I assure you that we will never compromise the ideology, the integrity, and the dignity of the party. In the meantime, the leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress says it will not accord Julius Abure any form of recognition following his re-election as Labour Party National Chairman. Describing the convention as a charade, NLC spokesman Ben Sinopa uh, told journalists that the Congress will never back the party under Abure's leadership. He adds that the return of Abure as national chairman was a nullity as far as the NLC is concerned as it did not follow the right national convention guidelines and procedures. For more on this, I'm joined now by our Director of News and Politics, Editor Samna Sambo. Good to see you and uh, thank thanks you. for your time. This <laughs> is you. uh, a big, first of all, Abure, the man with nine lives, nine political yeah. lives, is back again on the beat. Yeah. Uh, let us in on the first, uh, the genesis of this whole uh, impasse between the NLC and the Labour Party uh, before we now dig in to see what this <laughs> would mean. All right, yeah, I mean, you know, politics always full of uh, intrigues and games. Well, uh, the challenge that the NLC had had with uh, Julius Aburi is that there was an agreement that was signed which had expired as at last year, uh, one year from 2022 to 2023 for him to be allowed to conduct the elections, the general elections, and after that he would leave his position by June. But, of course, you all know the intrigues we've uh, had since uh, that June, and, of course, uh, People like Aburi think that there's an external factor to what's happening within the Labour Party. At some point, it was uh, La Media Papa and his faction all having challenges with him. But of course, the Labour Party just came, I'm sorry, the Nigerian Labour Congress only came to remind him that he was supposed to have left that position as at June last year and so uh, that some of them were actually tolerating him because of the challenges his leadership was having with uh, La Media Papa and of course because of the uh, uh, presidential uh, election petitions tribunal that was ongoing and they wanted to see how everything would end. Uh, but of course this is not new in politics. It's normal for you to have all of this. Uh, it's whether the convention that brought him into power today followed the guidelines set by INEC or not because for your leadership to be recognized, INEC has to be present at that uh, uh, national convention venue. So it's left for INEC to actually see if they were invited and if uh, they were invited, they eventually went to uh, this. Don't forget it was meant to have initially been held in Abia State, uh, but of course because of the challenges that they presumed was 
uh, going to prevent some people from coming. They moved it to Newi Anam uh, Anambra State, uh, which is the home of uh, Peter Obi, the home state of Peter Obi. But unfortunately, Peter Obi himself wasn't there. Uh, and the dynamics of Peter Obi being absent, and again, mm -hmm. some of the key demands that he brought before uh, members on the day, uh, which one of to give Peter Obi an all clear uh, ticket in the next yeah. election. What does this mean in a, in a democracy that already is enmeshed between a, a Labour Union and a Labour Party? Well, it will also help Nigerians to understand the democratic credentials of Peter Obi as a person. Because here's a division within his political party. And uh, you would have seen that he was very wise enough not to have been present there. Uh, politically. I can tell you that was a very good strategic move. Uh, though the governor of Abia State, who happens to be the only governor that uh, Labour Party has, wasn't there. But of course, the deputy governor and then other officials, elected officials were there. The entire state cabinet was there. So I wonder why the <laughs> governor himself wasn't there, if almost all the state officials were there. Uh, but of course, the members of the Labour Party at the National Assembly, the National Assembly delegation of the Labour Party were conspicuously absent. I think only one from Anambra State who was there, a member of the House of Reps. But you would have seen that before this purported convention that was called, uh, which uh, you know later led into what we have seen today, there was a huge crisis. The House caucus of the Labour Party had said that this convention should not go ahead because they believe that if we are to have convention based on INEX guidelines and what usually happen, normally it will start from the local, uh, from the World Congress to the local government Congress to the state congresses, and eventually that will then birth a national working committee at the highest level. Uh, but we are seeing the Labour Party through Julius Aburi's leadership also replying to them to say, no, our constitution at the Labour Party is different. We can decide to start with the uh, either the state uh, congresses or the national congresses or local government congresses. So in this instance, they started uh, with the biggest one, which is uh, the uh, national yeah, congress, yeah. the national convention. So. Then the question arises politically, who are those that populated members of this con convention? Because when you hold world congresses, you hold local government congresses, you hold state congresses, it is from here that you graduate leaders who are elected that will then be present at the national convention. I mean, I've covered several of these uh, uh, conventions by political parties, and I know that that is the procedure. And INEC actually says that is the procedure. But if the, no, uh, the Abure-led uh, leadership of the Labour Party is bringing a novelty within our political sphere, I mean, it's allowed. It all depends on how they want to run their party. But of course, this has led to a division within the party. And as I said earlier, this will test the political credentials and democratic credentials of Peter Obi, despite the fact that the Aburi-led uh, new leadership actually conferred the party's ticket to him, saying that he's the preferred candidate, and only himself, even the Labour Party governor in uh, Abia State, they say he's the preferred uh, candidate for 2027. And uh, before I let you go, assuming without con uh, you know conceding that. Uh, INEC was there because it's still too early in the day for INEC to give us a statement to show mm -hmm. whether they were there. And looking at what the NLC is saying that, well, we will recognize you because it didn't follow due process, which you had just explained to us. Uh, how does that now explain the, the stronghold or the uh, attempt of taking charge of the party by the NLC? Should INEC recognize this? Well, uh, Julius Abure is actually free to fight back. I mean, they fought to remove him from the leadership. There were accusations against him and all of that. Uh, he's a politician. He has a right to fight back, and he has fought back right now. But uh, in a convention where you are going to that people do not know the names of the delegates, where they are coming from, the areas, you also have questions to answer. And I can tell you that he has the courts to battle with, because this will definitely end up in the courts. And of course, Peter Obi, from what I gathered, uh, generally had told some of his uh, I mean, strong men, uh, advisors, and others to actually stay away from the convention because there's a likelihood that this battle may go to court and all of that. And he was right in his own way because, I mean, he shouldn't be seen supporting anyone. Uh, but 
supporting the Labour Party's constitution. Because in all of this, what does the Labour Party constitution says? And it is very clear as to what the Labour Party's constitution has said, except if it was amended without members of the party knowing or without Nigerians knowing that that document had been amended. But the procedures for holding national convention, state congresses, local government congresses, world congresses are purely outlined there. So. It's right for Julius Abure to want to stand and fight against those who are fighting against him, but he should understand that the institution of the political party is bigger than any individual. And then also, uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress should actually try to provide some breathing space for the political party to move, irrespective of the fact that they helped in the registration and all of that. Uh, but it's not directly an amalgam of the NLC. And you will see that there are two positions, Deputy National Chairman uh, reserved uh, for NLC and TUC, well, they didn't fill them up today because of the crisis they've been having. I'm thinking later on the NLC and TUC may be asked to fill them up. But what we must say is that Nigeria's democracy must be consolidated. We mustn't allow political parties to define our democracy, but we must define our democracies by adherence to the rule of law. And the rule of law means that political parties should obey even their own uh, constitutions, Members of political parties, including their national working committees, must not only say the way their political documents are, but they must be seen to be obeying them. So we wish him all the best as he tries to battle all the you know, challenges that he will be having ahead. And if INEC does recognize him, I mean, good for him and uh, those that have been endorsed today. Well, Samna Sambo, many thanks for making this clear for Thank us. Thank you so and much. And even clearer. <laughs>